guys, some students leave the exam in an excited state, thinking that they did well on the test, but unfortunately, they get bad grades. Has this ever happened to you? If so, please continue watching this video. In this three-part series, we will go over the top mistakes the students make when they answer the reading comprehension questions, the language exercises, and the writing tasks. So please check out the videos in the coming days. First of all, I cannot start without thanking my colleagues who generously contributed to this video with the valuable tips to raise your awareness of these mistakes and help you avoid them when you answer the reading comprehension questions. Let's take this sample reading comprehension text to identify the mistakes related to each question. The questions we have in this exam are understanding the main idea of the text, correcting false statements with details from the text, completing a summary with missing words, choosing the best adjective or adjectives from a given group, finding synonyms or you can also have antonyms from the text, and finally reacting to the text. However, we can also have other types of questions like choosing the correct or suitable title, determining the type of the text, answering short WH questions, indicating cause and effect relationships, and reference questions. Let's jump right in. Mistake number one, the main idea of the text. The first question can be about the main idea of the text. Sometimes the question states that you should tick the right answer. However, the students circle the right alternative and this is incorrect and you wouldn't get the mark even if the answer was right. Why? Simply because tick is not circle and circle is not tick. So you have to make sure what the question states. Another problem students make is that they tick two answers instead of one. Be careful, there is only one correct answer with such questions. Is it clear? Right, let's move on to mistake number two, correcting false statements. The second question is the following. For each of the following statements, pick out one detail from the text showing that it is false. To pick out means to choose, and I have to choose from the text. What are the common mistakes uh, with this question? Number one, do not write two or three sentences to justify your answers. As you can see, the question states one detail, and a detail can be one word or one sentence. It can never be two sentences. Clear? This is number one. Number two, do not add unnecessary words or omit the most important ones. Number three, do not justify your answers by using your own words or by paraphrasing sentences from the text. The question says, pick out one detail from the text and it is one and one is underlined in the question. Number four, do not turn the statements into the negative or the affirmative forms. Let me explain this point. In the statement we have, for example, Amy and Ella quickly embrace their parents' ideas. However, some students here put the sentence in the negative form. He or she writes as follows, Amy and Ella didn't quickly embrace their parents' ideas. And this is incorrect because you didn't justify from the text. You didn't give an idea or one detail from the text. Is it clear? Let's move on to mistake number three, summary question. The question you have in the exam is as follows. Complete the following paragraph with three words from paragraph three, one word per blank. However, sometimes it can be from the text, from the whole text, and not only from a specific paragraph. As you can see, we have three words 
and we have three blanks. This means you need one word in each blank and not two words. Okay? Clear? However, the students here do not differentiate between a word and an expression. A word is one word. However, an expression is a group of words. Be careful if the question states a word, write one word and not an expression. Plus, don't write two or three words in one space. If you add one word to the correct one, you don't get the mark. Another mistake they might make is to look for the words in the wrong paragraph instead of the stated paragraph in the question. Mistake number four, finding synonyms or antonyms. The questions that you might have are, find words or expressions in the text meaning nearly the same as, or find words and expressions in the text which are opposite in meaning to. Instead of looking of that word in the given form, the students here come up with another in a different form or mode. Let me give you an example. We have to find a synonym for starting a journey. As you can see, this expression comes in the gerund form, which means verb plus ing, so I should find an expression which comes in the same form in the text, which is uh, the gerund form. If we go back to the text, we will find this expression hitting the road, which means uh, starting a journey. And as you can see, starting and hitting are in the gerund form. Something else the students should pay attention to is the following. Please do not misspell the words or copy it from the text incorrectly. Sometimes misspelling may change the whole meaning of the words and it will not be accepted as a correct answer. Let me give you another example here. In the text we have to find a synonym to the expression monotonous routine. And in the text, we find this expression in a rat. Some students write rat instead of rat. The first word is an animal, which means a mouse, whereas the second one means a boring situation. Mistake number five, circling the right adjectives. The question that we have is circle two adjectives that best describe the family's new way of life. It is clear that two is underlined so you are supposed to underline two adjectives and not three adjectives. Unfortunately, some students circle three instead of two in order to guarantee that at least one or two correct answers. If you do so, let me tell you how you are graded. The incorrect answer will take off a correct item. For example, this question is worth two marks and we have four choices, two correct choices and two incorrect ones. If you circle three, two correct and one incorrect, the incorrect answer will result in the deduction of one mark. So instead of getting two out of two, you get one out of two. Is it clear? Move on to mistake number six, which is uh, the reaction to the text. In the personal justified question, the students sometimes answer with yes or no, without justifying their answers. In the personal justified answer, the students' justifications are not coherent with their answers. For example, the students sometimes answer with yes, but give an explanation that justifies a no. So this is a contradictory answer. They should also keep in mind that a reaction is not repeating the words of the text copy and paste. It is expressing an opinion using their own words. Mistake reference question. As for the reference question, this type of question is sometimes tricky. So keep in mind that a word can refer to an idea as well. So you have to understand what that word really refers to and here the students pay no heed to it and fail to hit the nail on its head. Apart from these problems, one of the main problems facing students during the exam is time management. 
Many of them fail to manage the time allotted to them in an efficient way. In fact, they read the whole text time and time again, which comes at the expense of the other components of the exam. So they end up wasting a lot of valuable time. Sometimes it's uh, the other way around. They rush to answer without taking enough time to think, ignoring the fact that some questions are a little bit tricky or misleading. Something else students have to keep in mind is that a text is not supposed to be understood literally or that everything is explicitly stated. There are many ideas or stances that should be inferred or out of sheer reasoning and thorough comprehension. So they should not assume that reading comprehension is an easy task to do. Concentration and measured confidence with a pinch of keen shrewdness are required to perform well. That's all for me, guys. Uh, we've come to the end of this uh, video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also to make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. The next video will be about the top six mistakes in the language exercises. Thank you so much. Love and peace. Brilliant.